All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Randall. This is the McClure's. We react, review, look at, make fun of stuff over here. Today, we have a Upchurch, the other country boy explanation behind the scenes, kind of a, you know, artist take on the song type of deal. Uh, at the time of recording this, uh, the, the song hasn't come out yet. It comes out on the 28th. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put this in the same video with this song or if we are going to post this earlier. So, uh, channel sponsored by McClure's.store. You can buy American products from Americans. Help America. Let's get into this. All right, so short story short. Last night I made this video. It took me about five hours. And um, I went into my iMovie and I accidentally deleted it. So I pulled out this oh, knife there, and I bro. stabbed the fuck out of the chair that I'm sitting in. <laughs> this is my chair. It died last night. I'm still sitting in it. Anyways, so I have a song coming out Friday, October 20th. You're paying, bro. It's called The Other Country Boy. In a world where the music scene is playing damn people. I'm covered up and I don't. All right, so that kind of country right there is like riding around in my dad's truck when I was a kid kind of country. I'm the other country boy. And this song was actually written by me, fool. <laughs> this is a court document that I don't really care about. <laughs> I just like to rub it in all these country singers' faces that I write every single fucking word on all my songs. And me sitting down and writing this song was a turning point in my life because... You know, for years they've tried to downplay me and be like, oh, don't worry, you'll get there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And the same people looking at me telling me this stuff are fucking brainwashed. I mean, the, the industry people, they're like, don't worry, you'll get there. I was like, dude, what, what? Get where, bro? Dude, I'm something that no one on your entire label will ever fucking be, dude. No, dude, I'm a staple in music. And yeah, like, where are they trying to tell this guy to get to? He literally, like, created a whole genre of music, dude, that he's like the, um, you know, Elvis Presley of started his own, own thing. And now he's got dozens and dozens of people trying to make music that sounds like his. What does he need to get to, bro? You guys are trying to copy him. And hey, fuck it, say it's cocky. It is cocky. It should be cocky. In the words of Kid Rock, they say I'm cocky, and I say what? It ain't bragging, motherfucker, if you back it up. Yep. And I back it up for the people like me, which is why I'm here. Hi. Why they make people like us who <laughs> have missing teeth and, you know, cuss and say fuck and voice our opinions? I don't know why they want us thinking we're small, but hey, hoes. We're giants over here, all right? They just don't want people that look like us holding things like that show, hey, we're doing shit that's way bigger than y'all are doing. Why are y'all saying y'all are so big when really you're, you're not? Dude, I have double platinum records. You can't say anything to me anymore. Anything you say, I'm just yeah. like, hell yeah, dude, you're doing great. I'm I knew he went platinum on one. I didn't know he was double platinum. What does platinum even mean? What is that like, uh... Because, I mean, back in the day when it was, like, CDs, there was, I think you only had to sell, like, a hundred thousand or, or a million, maybe. But now that it's streaming and stuff, I'm not sure how they how they calculate that. Uh, somebody let me know what the breakdown is. I mean, I'm going to be real. I like talking shit to them and telling them, hey, fuck you. You suck. I'm going to smack you in public. You know why? Because I don't like when... The whole, it goes back to the high school thing. Like, uh-huh, look at that kid. He's got dirty shoes. I'm the guy with dirty shoes, bro. And I want to step on all y'all shoes. And why do I want to do that? Why? Simply for the people like me who have dirty shoes. Metaphorically speaking. And, you know, and everything I'm saying goes along with this song. Uh, that was a fantastic uh, church metaphor. Uh, we need to put that, I'm going to put that on a shirt, maybe. We're going to get there in a minute, but... The thing is, is if you ask me personally, everyone's like, oh, well, you, uh, you don't, you're not signed with the record label. Yeah, because I believe in myself. I believe in what I am. And the people that listen to me believe in me for believing in myself. 
People who sign a record label don't believe in themselves, which is why they need all these other people. I seen a post the other day from an industry artist that signed to a major label. And they're holding up this, I mean, fuck, I don't even know what you call it. A fucking, a printed out piece of paper. Anyway, they framed this printed out piece of paper and it said, congratulations, 100,000 streams. The fuck is 100,000, what does that do? Not only that, there was like fucking 12 people in the picture all going, so they're, they're giving out white ribbons now, cuz 100,000, you don't get nothing for 100,000 streams. I was like, wait, 100,000? Who's celebrating that? I mean, obviously, if you're like a, like, if I made a song and put it out tomorrow and I got 100,000 streams, um, obviously, that would be incredible. But if you're signed to a record label, 100, uh, what? Okay. I mean, I guess you get a printed out piece of paper. Look, let me put it in perspective to you with numbers. Okay, so you have to sell 500,000 singles for something to be certified gold. When it comes to streaming, 1,500 streams is one record sold. So if industry people are sitting here being like, congratulations, 100,000 streams. 100,000 divided, divided by 1,500. Is... You sold 66 singles. Yay. That's probably why they're celebrating it because it's 666. Demonic fucking mainstream <laughs> record labels, bro. That's probably it. That's not good, okay? That's not good. It, in the music industry numbers, that is not good. And if you make somebody think they're doing a good job when they're doing not a good job, you are killing their drive to do a good job. Not only that, you are making that artist a fucking mental psycho. Me and JJ Lawhorn had this talk the other day when we we're sitting around the fire. He's like, dude, he's like, I go downtown sometimes and meet people and they stick their fucking nose up and act like they're big shit. He's like, and I'm not being rude. I just have no fucking idea who they are. And then when I look them up, their song's been played 800 times and they're walking around like they're fucking Patsy Cline. Okay, I did not mean to make that last line rhyme. It just comes natural. <laughs> but he's right though. That's why the chorus piece that I played in the beginning of the video says, in a world where the music scene is planned and paid for, I'm covered up, but not on the covers, son. I'm the other country boy. You know, the one that can back up their songs, back up their lyrics, and not call for backup for lyrics for a song. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and these same industry people will be like, I'm the guy who can back up the lyrics from the song, not the guy who calls somebody for backup for the lyrics for the song. <laughs> Uh, that's why he's so good at rap, because he's just got this way with words, bro. Like, man, you brag too much. Motherfucker, of course I do. I'm not bragging for just me. I'm man, bragging for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of motherfucking people. Stand on your... Hell yeah, I'm gonna brag. Stand but on guess your accomplishments, what? bro. They're bragging with me. Who? Creek Squad, dog. Everybody that lives like this. Everybody's been through some shit. <laughs> You can try to get rid of me all you want. You're not going to get rid of the feeling people have when they listen to this song that comes out. Sorry, not sorry. Even though the song is called <laughs> The Other Country Boy, and you would assume that the song is all about me. It's really not. The song was written about all the people who support me and what I do. In the song, I, I can't, I don't want to show the verses. The verses are like fucking... They're timeless, bro. They are timeless. But I will reveal some <laughs> behind the lyrics things about the chorus that I showed. So, the song is me questioning myself. It's not saying like, aha, this is what I am. No, it's me questioning myself. But I get the answer to any question I have. Every time I question myself, who's there to answer it? 
Creek Squad, my supporters, that they are there to answer it because they know me and I know they wouldn't bullshit me about myself. They're not blowing smoke up my ass. If I'm doing something fucked up or stupid, they tell me. If I'm wrong about something, they tell me. If I'm doing good about something, they tell me. I trust them, dude. I don't, I don't trust any industry person. Y'all's liars, man. And, and when I wrote the song, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, yo, why do I get this great ass opportunity, bro? Like, why do I get to have all these cool interactions with these people? Why, why do I get to be that guy? I ain't shit. I'm just, fuck, I don't know. I, I'm just a fucking floor full of ashes in a 90 model car. And a couple missing teeth from chewing tobacco too long. I'm a floor full of ashes in a 90 model car. A couple missing teeth from chewing tobacco too long. And it's me questioning myself. I'm saying, why, why do y'all like me so much? I don't get it. I'm, I'm just exactly what I said. That's why right there, bro, because just what you would normally say in a normal video is what's in your song. So it's easy to connect to you and relate to you because you put out real music. That's r real from you. That's cool. In the song. And that's why I made the lyrics. And sometimes people's like, dude, how'd you come up with that? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? Bro, I've had people who are fucking amazing, well-known songwriters be like, man, you're such a good songwriter. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm just, I guess, a good life liver or something. I mean, to me personally, every song I write is more than just a song. I mean, because, I mean, it's about stuff that I went through. But this one is especially special because this is me asking a question and my supporters answering the question for me. That's what is so beautiful about the song. I'm not the one calling myself the other country boy. It's my supporters calling me that. That is the answer to the question I have. They're saying, well, you're the other country boy. It's not like a braggadocious, like, aha, look at me. It's also not like, oh, boo-hoo, I'm the other country boy, wah. It's me being proud of being that. I started doing all this in my early 20s, man. And growing up in Music City, born and raised in Music City, you know, I always thought, you know, growing up when I was younger, that you had to work towards what they're doing. You don't. You don't. You got to work towards yourself. And this is what my supporters, my listeners have taught me over the years. It's okay to be a floor full of ashes in a 90 model car. A couple missing teeth from chewing tobacco too long. It's okay to be that if that's what you are. The lyrics in the second half are pretty much saying, hey man, I'm covered up but I'm not on that magazine cover. Now, if you hear that and you don't really think about it, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, he's talking about how they kind of don't notice him and he's not on the magazine cover. No, that's not at all what it means. I'm saying I'm covered by the right people. The people that I'm covered by are greater than any fucking magazine cover that you could be on the cover of. In a world where the music scene is playing damn people, I'm the other country boy. The song is proof if people help each other, they can get somebody somewhere that they never thought they could be. And that applies to everything in life. I mean, from my perspective, it's obviously music, but this is in general. The message is in general. So when people are like, how dare you say you're a staple in music? Hey man. These bad motherfuckers over here made me a staple in music. So, I mean, what you're saying don't matter, duder. The record labels don't like me and ignore me because they have to not like me and ignore me. They didn't make any of this. Me and the people watch. Yeah, they can't be like, oh yeah, you can just do what church does. Because then what artist would go to them? And then they don't have jobs. Watching this video made this. I'm not on the radio. I'm not at the red carpets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not at a photo shoot with another fucking famous asshole that I don't know, sm fake smiling. No, dude, I'm going to get sausage and biscuits in the morning and I'm fucking, I end up at a damn a job site where 
somebody's building a log cabin and I'm smoking a blunt with them. Why? Because music. Smoking a cigar I've ever seen in my life. And just jamming out to music. I mean, come on, bro. Last night, two o'clock in the fucking morning. I'm choking to death for some fucking reason. I go to the doctor to get a fucking shot in my ass, which burns like a motherfucker. And then the doctor in my town brings me a fucking computer screen of another doctor somewhere else who's got to help me fill out this fucking digital thing. He's like, when's your next tour? I'm like, what how the fuck do you know? He's like, I went to one of your shows. Bro, virtual doctor dude, right? Oh, He's been to a show before, dog, in Texas. Have you not? Yep. Balling, baby. Balling. <laughs> yeah. What we've created that could not cool. ever be created by a record label. This right. has to be created by the people listening to the music and the guy singing the music for the people listening. That's how this kind of stuff is created. It does not come along that often in music. It's fucking record. See, Church didn't buy his fan base. He didn't pay for it. You know what I mean? He didn't market his way to his fan base. He literally got it like word to mouth, referral. I don't know if anybody's been in business, but referrals is where it's at, bro. So his whole, his everything is built by referral. Um, so it's, it's strong. Rare. This song is the epitome of people coming together to help somebody get somewhere out of the goodness of their heart. It's going a little crazy. With real shit going down, doing it. That's all. And it's going to be a big song. Why? I mean, because. It's me asking a question and questioning myself and everyone who listens to my music giving me the answer. It's, there's no formula. There's no fucking promoting it. There's no photo shoot it's just real shit october 28th fucking love you guys fucking but you already knew that <laughs> uh fucking church dude all right so that's church join uh, large scale battles with military church's new songs coming out october the 28th make sure you're there to check it out i will definitely be there um, I'll probably record a reaction to the premiere because I'll end up just listening to it. So if I don't record it at the earliest possible moment, then I won't get a, an actual reaction to it. Appreciate you stopping by McClure's.store. You can buy American products, help support my family, and buy products by Americans. McClure's.store. Later.